things in the Word. We need to have refresher courses on that. Amen? We need this, okay? Things can't, we just can't run all over the church with a hoopla service and have no stinking character during the week. I feel like preaching. I'm feeling like preaching now. I'm tired of that. You know, the people shouting hallelujah the loudest are living like hell outside making a bad report for the kingdom of God. But honestly, we need to really think about, you know, see, because God sees everything. So I don't know who we think we're fooling. Really, who are we fooling? I mean, I church, I, I, really, isn't it time we really get serious with God? Yes. Isn't it time we stop having a dating relationship and have a marriage? Yes. Really? How about a real commitment that you are going to be what this Bible says, and if you fail, you're going to repent of it, and you're going to get back up the next day, and you're going to go after it again. And you're not going to let these things or any other things that sink, or even the things that God shakes around our world, distract us from the promises set before us. Because there's rewards. There are. We learn that over and over and over. The rewards when we do that, okay? You know what? I, I'm not impressed when somebody starts something anymore. I used to be. I'm going to see if you're still doing it in a couple of years. That's what impresses me. But not that you started something, but did you finish what God told you to do? You know how many things are started in churches and just go right on down the waistline? Nothing ever happens with them. Really? You need to let our yay be yay and our no be no. But we are people in churches. Some of you may be here. God's called you into a five-fold ministry place, or he's asked you to start something, or, or go uh, represent him somewhere, and you're going to get to it. You're going to get to it. Or maybe you start it, and you find, oh, my, 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 look at those five obstacles. Well, maybe that wasn't God. Starting's easy. Finishing the race. Finishing the race is really what's going on, okay? See, the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. How did Joseph endure what he endured? We've been majorly studying this guy. How did he do it? Fruit. Not charismania. Fruit. That is how he endured what he did. I love Psalm 105, verse 10. I didn't put it on the screen. You can jot it down and look. It gives us a glimpse of how he did it. It's a powerful scripture, Psalm 105, verse 18. It says, his soul entered into the iron with his hands and feet. Do we know what that means? His soul. And you see, some of you, because it's depending on your, your background, you might think that that means, oh, that's so negative. No, that's real positive. That's wonderful news. When our soul enters into iron, that means it ain't running our life. When our mind, will, and emotions are locked down in the, in, the, in the things of God and in the word of God, then our little fickle feelings aren't going to take us somewhere else. They're locked down somewhere. So you're not going to tell me what to do. We're going to do it God's way, or we're going to do it God's way. But we're going to do it God's way. I love that scripture that he presents there, okay? what? Because he, he endured he endured by trusting God and doing good. We see this in the life of Joseph. Okay? He, 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 he has a whole prescription we just looked at. He, he had confidence in God. He had to have the confidence where he couldn't have trusted God. And as he didn't just trust God, he did good. The very people that sold him out, the very people that betrayed him, all of those people... He couldn't wait to see them, and he walked in love so powerfully. It's an amazing, amazing portion of Scripture. You know, and at the very end, which we're going to see when we end this week, verse chapter 50, he says, you know what, brothers? And, and I can almost see him just embracing them. You know what, brothers? It's okay. Because what you meant for harm, God meant for 